Hi everybody, welcome back to the Metal Gear Recollection. This is episode 2 of the PS Walker. Um, I'm just blowing Tony's mind by telling him that you use your base to develop new items and that you have to get blueprints for them. Boobies! That, that isn't really... Flat chested! What does that have to do with what we were talking about? Uh, we were talking about something? I was looking at porn. I'm trying to have a serious conversation. Well, you were talking to the wrong person. The FSLN Commandante. Dante. Is that like the Devil May Cry? What? Is that like the Devil May Cry? Is what like the Devil May Cry? Dante. Oh, no, the Commandante. Oh, the con. Yeah, the leader of the Fez Sandinistas, basically. The Fez. Talate loco. Lolco. Which declares Latin America a nuke free zone. Hmm. So basically, if, you, if you're just joining us, um, there's one person. Yeah, oh. <laughs> if you're just joining us, there's nukes in Costa Rica, the CIA is putting them there, and the Russians are like, Hey, hey, not cool. can you go figure this out? We'll hire you, we'll give you a base. And so, I have a feeling this episode is going to be learning about the base. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe that won't happen until something happens later, but I don't remember. It's been a while since I've played through the story of this game. Um, which is part, which is part of the structure of the whole game. Normally, you know, in a Metal Gear Solid game, like let's use Metal Gear Solid Three because we've played it already. You start at the beginning, and you get to the end, and that's it. You go through all the boss fights, you go through all the story stuff, but in this game, you can experience them again. So it de-incentivizes you, I guess is a good word, to have le more than one playthrough. Mm -hmm. um, simply because you can always go back and do the story again with your own playthrough with your super awesome weapons at any time. Because you get weapons that make, that trivialize like 70% of this game towards the end of the game. Hmm. Hey look, we have a mother base. It's an oil rig. It's pretty fucking cool. We use it to develop things. We use it to get people. So let's take a look people. at our staff. Who do we have so far? Uh, no staff assignment tutorial. But, um, here's these guys. And you can put them in things. And they do uh -oh. things. Uh, who's that? Auto assign. So normally you want to just auto assign everybody. Um, you sure. And they go to their specific areas. <clears throat> so Mother Base is broken into a couple different, uh, units, I guess is the right word. Uh, you have a waiting room, a combat unit, an R&D team, a brig, uh, which is for new guys that you rape out of the field, and all. Uh, the, wait the waiting room is where people go when there's not enough room in your other units. And there will be more units expanded upon later. Uh, your combat team you can use for basically side quest missions, uh, among other things. The R&D team, the higher level your R&D unit is, the more weapons you will have developed. Um, and then there's other ones that will get unlocked later, but we have now developed, or we've now jammed a bunch of people in there, and now here we are in our R&D, uh, menu, where we can develop weaponry, or upgrade weaponry. For instance, the Mark 22 Hush Puppy Pistol, I can upgrade it here. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember what the upgrade does. Whoops, no, I do want to begin development. Um, it takes a little time for the development to go through, but once it does, you get the thing, and thing are happen. All right, let's all... And based on how high your, your uh, uh, R&D level is, you're able to uh, build new up... Or you're basically able to upgrade weapons and unlock new weapons as you go along. Uh, pretty interesting. It's great for a handheld thing, because you just jump on there and load up a bunch of stuff. You got, you know items here that you unlock in the field or get developed at your base um and this is the interesting thing i wanted to talk about this episode since we're kind of stuck in a menu here is uh this game was built around uh cooperative play no way yeah so, so if i had it we could play if you had it we could totally play we could do co-op missions we could do the whole story co-op if we wanted there could be two snakes running around which uh, i i mean if if you had it 
for your 360 and you absolutely wanted to do it, that could be a fun thing to do. Um, however, I don't think it's necessary for this LP. However, that love box that we picked up in the previous, uh, the previous episode, that yeah. is a box designed for two people. Oh, so a love box. I get it now. Because we love each other and we want to be deep inside of our bo box. Where was I going with this? Anyways, mission selector. So let's take a look at the mission select screen here. Uh, for some reason it has to load to get to the fucking mission select screen. But it's a PSP game. So it explains, uh, you can play co-ops missions by connecting to Xbox Live to become the host of a co-ops mission. Or coops. Uh, select a mission, blah, 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 blah. So basically it says, look, there are missions you can do and you can do them co-op if you so choose. Now, uh, you can do it with party too, which makes it really easy. Now, if you look in the mission selector thing, there's many different types of missions here. You've got your yes. main ops, which is your story missions. You will see these. There's yes. extra ops, which are missions that, um, they're just side missions, basically. They're not necessarily important. So I may show off one or two of them. Uh, just uh, maybe some of the wackier ones or maybe some of the ones that are uh, more relevant to story. I don't know. Uh, you've got your co-ops, which is where you basically can search for a host and blah, blah, blah. You can look at cutscenes. Um, you can do missions in different regions. And then you've got all of them. Uh, however, we need to contact the Sandinista Comandante. Comandante! Comandante! And that's what we're doing. So going back to the uh, going back to the fragmented uh, nature of the missions in this game, like if this was a regular Metal Gear game, it would go right into this after the previous one. If it, you know, if I was just playing this on the bus or on the train or just you know in bed before I get out of bed with the coffee that someone brought to me, like my wife, because my wife's awesome. Um, coffee, it's all about that Earl Grey tea, bruh. Hey, I've been having a lot of tea recently too, uh, but good shit. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool because you can basically choose when to do the thing. So if you decide, oh, hey, there's a mission coming up, and I feel like it's going to be difficult. So instead of doing it now, I want to build up my items and stuff first. You can totally do that. It's great. It's fantastic. Great. I know. So, whoa. The themes of peace, what peace is, and enforcing peace are central to this game. However, they kind of shove it down your throat constantly. And speaking of shoving things down your throat, uh, I'm cough here. Shit, that's coming out of your throat, you dumbass. Hey, it got shoved down there eventually. It got reverse shoved down my throat, so suck it and deal with it or something. Suck it. Anyways, that's so even going. now they're going into. I mean, we're just stuck in a menu, and she's just going on and on about peace and peace and peace and peace. Which, I mean, that's kind of that's classic Kojima. Mm. So that's oh yeah, that's not the worstest thing in the world. But here we are, you know. I don't know worse. Is never felt what it's. I mean, imagine you're doing this on your portable thing, and it's just eating into your battery. Oh man, so, I remember those days. I think the PSP's battery wasn't that bad though. The first generation was. The was second it? generation wasn't that bad. Yeah. I think I, I think I had a second gen because I took that thing when I was in San Francisco. I had one. I took that motherfucker everywhere. I had part time work and instead of working, I would just sit in the back and play Guilty Gear XX Reload on the PSP. <laughs> People would be like, "Hey, you need to work," and I'd be like, "Shut the fuck up." Get out of my face. Mission. You don't know me. You don't know my struggle. So Frank, I listened to Lincoln Park. Oh. oh. No, I, I didn't listen to Lincoln Park even at that time. And if you want to harp on Lincoln Park, I've got a funny story for that. Oh, Jesus. But, um... Yeah, so so that's one of the major strengths of this game as a, as a portable, as a handheld. But it's also a major weakness. Because, you know, if... If you beat, if you get to like a super high point, like high tension moment in a cutscene or something like that, and then it's like on to the next mission, going to the next mission, having to navigate the menus and blah blah blah, that kind of kills it a little bit. It kills the tension definitely. Um, kind of like putting chapters in some of the later Resident Evil games kind of kills the tension. Um, actually, it's more for hardcore horror having to go between chapters, and like the worst is probably fatal frame because you're literally like you're in fatal frame and it's the super creepy high quality atmospheric environment and every single time you do the fucking 
um, where was I going with that? Every single time you do, um, like, combat in the game, I'm naked. Every time you do combat in the game, you get fucking points. Like, uh, you're in a super tense moment where you're fighting the goddamn, you're fighting the, the, the ghost, and you're shooting him, and it's like, hi, combo! I feel like I'd have to disagree with you, because it only gets bad on replays. From a horror standpoint, though, it's like, I don't need points and, and numbers shooting up on screen when I'm dealing with a threat. Yeah, because it seems more like a fucking arcade. But yeah, I get I get what you're saying. But it, just think about it. Were you ever complaining about it through your first playthrough? Um, I've never played any of them. However, uh -huh. from what I've seen, it's that bad. But my 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 uh, my words. Come Sorry. on, you can do this. Come on. I'm trying to play. I'm trying to play and talk at the same time. Um, my other example of that would be uh, my other example of that would be let's see. Okay, so. First uh, use of the Fulton system, and we'll talk about this here. But basically, you use a balloon, and it sends them off, and then they go to your base, and eventually they get conscripted into your base. Um, conscripted. But another example of like breaking the tension in a game or breaking the immersion would be fucking something, man. <laughs> Are you just? Is it just? <laughs> just coming out of your mouth. I completely, I completely lost what the fuck I was talking about. We were talking about Fatal Frame. We were talking about yes. immersion. Then I talked yes. about fucking balloons. Yes. Oh shit! I was supposed to go the other way. Well, shit. I guess we're gonna grab some guys here while we talk about stuff. Um, amnesia. <laughs> oh. You played Amnesia? Yes. Imagine if suddenly Amnesia was like killer combo in the middle uh, of running yeah, from fucking yeah. dude. You'd be like, what? What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that a man? Is there a man there? No. Have you played Soma? Uh, no, but I've seen a full playthrough of Soma. It's quite interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's very good. So I guess we're going around the back way to get to the area, but I think we might have had to do that anyways. I don't know. I don't You're know. fucking up, man! I don't know what the fuck. I am fucking up. Hey, look, there's more men. Get him. What's going on? It's there a man's go. butt. So, oh, God. So, <laughs> the, the... The words make happen. Turtle words happen. Words. Sir, I like turtles. The the auto aim, the combat, the gameplay in this game is fantastic. It's absolutely mm. fantastic. Mm. And it was a real evolution from the previous games. And I mean, I should be talking about this more in four than this game because four introduced the, you know, more shootery mechanics of the game. True that, like being able to switch shoulders and shit. Um. Oh yeah, I can do that here. But it's, it's a fantastic evolution of the Metal Gear series because, I mean, Metal Gear Solid, what a, what, kind of a train wreck to play, man. And we'll get, you'll see what I'm talking about no, when we get to No, I don't it. want to. But like 90% of the time you're playing the game, you can't see the dudes you're shooting at, which oh, yeah. is why the Soliton radar system was such a, a revelation for the game because you didn't necessarily need to see the guy as long as you knew you were squared up with the guy dead on from your radar screen. Okay, that guy's out. Hmm. So. Oh, come on. Mm, I don't know go. if I. Eh, I guess I agree with you. Oh shit! Oh shit! That man. Oh fuck! There's a man. Oh. His butt. My silencer's gone. Oh. Huh. So. As Do they have as... silencers in Metal Gear? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I guess it just didn't but matter. But if I remember, yeah, if I remember correctly, it did not matter. Very well. Uh, well, it did not matter to an extent, I should say. What do you mean? Um, something I can't remember. Oh, there is still a guy. <clears throat> hey, yo, guy. Hey, hey. Hey. You, you got a nice hey, ass. Let, hey, let me shoot. 20 bucks you owe me, yeah. you motherfucker. Okay, so I think that was all the men. <laughs> all of the men. So now I have to meet the FSLN Commandante. Inside the both house. Mm. So, ex yes. what, wait, did I go in the wrong spot? Did I go in the right spot? I did go in the right spot, or kind of. I think I was mm. just supposed to neutralize all the bros, and that was the important thing to do at this point was to neutralize, neutralize all, the man's all them bros. <laughs> Man, the textures in this game are both fantastic for a PSP model and not great. Looks better than Metal Gear Solid, but that's a goddamn PlayStation game, so. Oh. Also, when did I get a Deagle or a 9mm, whatever the fuck he has? I have an M16 and I have a Hush Poopy. 
Nava machines. Yeah. Oh man, look, they all look scared. They're scared of this man. Guinness, El Che, no way. So they think he looks like Che Guevara. What? Yeah. Actually, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, comparing and contrasting uh, Snake to uh, Che Guevara in this game. Interesting. I hear I hear a train honk 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 oh. honk. Oh god, horn, there's horn, a train. Horn horn. I'm about to run a train on this chick here. Yeah yeah. I'll help. Yep. I'll take whatever you've got. <clears throat> So this is our introduction to uh, basically the leader of the Sandinistas at this point. Uh, Sandinistas. This person, Amanda Valianzo, Valenciano Libre. Li what? Yeah. I are all the names. All the names are are very. All the names in this game are kind of. Um, You've got no telephone or lines. Weird. Your shot. Not weird. Like, no, you know but what? They're, no, they're I, I think too, I know what it is. They're too appropriate because her name is Liberation. I mean, not yeah. Liberation. It's Libre. But it's like Paz, Kojima. Paz is all about peace, and her name means peace. Uh, Kazuhira Miller, it, 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 Kazuhira means peace. It's like Kojima just took a like a Spanish dictionary, looked for certain words. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna name you this. I'm gonna name you that. I'm gonna name you this. Yeah, he did it a little more tastefully than uh, Capcom treated Africa in Resident Evil 5, but I, I have a feeling that, yeah, the thing was the same. Um, another thing about the uh, 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 words, 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 um, uh, different naming conventions in, in this game. Uh, in this game, Snake, instead of just being referred to Big Boss, he's referred to as Vic Boss, V-I-C Boss. Um, and uh, in the pre in the previous episode, he actually goes on a tirade about it because they call him Vic Boss, and he's like, "No, there's no victory for us. We're just here to just be unhappy and, and kill, and people hire us, and we kill people, and that's it. That's all it is. We live and die on the battlefield. Joy, the fear. God damn it. Do you think?" <laughs> What would you say at this point is Snake's emotion? If you if you were to follow if you were to follow the naming convention of the previous game, regret. I kind of like that, but that kind of makes me think of Halo too. Why? Because there's a profit of regret in that. Oh God. Yeah. You never played Halo two either. Uh, I've played Halo ha Halo Halo two, but I just don't remember. Uh... Oh, a lot of it. I probably beat the story in that four hundred thousand times. Yeah. So, anyways, we're meeting. We're meet. We've met our contact. It's this this hot chick. Hot chick. Yay! And we meet this little boy, um, who is a child soldier. And I want to talk about child soldiers, but this is not the time for it. Um. You sure? Yes, because it's going to go into the characterization of Snake as who he is. Because at this point, everybody's like, oh, Snake's a good guy. But it's it's more than that. He's not a good guy. He's kind of He kind of exists and has existed in a gray area forever. Um, Necessary evil. And this game, to an extent, but uh, Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain specifically, go into Snake exists in this technically morally corrupt... You know, he's a bad guy. And you kind of learn that here. Hey, look, there's a UAV robot thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 1970. Yeah, in the 70s. Look at it. No, look at it, though. It's it's shooting at us. Oh, God. You ready for more quick time events? Sure. You're there's, the one doing it. There's a point where I get to do shooting in quick time events. Mm -hmm. It's actually kind of interesting. Well, um, you're wrong and paranoid. Why am I wrong? Why am I paranoid? What? Uh... The, uh... Fucking nano machine. So shit's going down. Clearly there's more going on than just rebels and a couple CIA guys. Because here's this fucking thing. Oh, by the way, that thing's the size of... A big Country. thing. A big thing? It's the size of a truck. I'm trying to think of something to compare it to. No, it's... Larger? Smaller? It's, it's about the size of, uh house 
No. Um. Small house. Uh, Apartment. hovercraft. The the navy hovercraft. Oh, that fucking thing. Yeah, it's about the size of a navy hovercraft, and Jesus it's Christ. flying in the air, and hovering, and crafting. And it has a giant, cock wrestling. And it has a giant railgun for a dick was going to be the end of my sentence until you until you started talking about Futanari dicks. <laughs> yeah. So Um you could see from the prompts Oh how did I miss it? Shit. Fuck. I think I was supposed to miss it, but that's fine. Um I was actually controlling that. They laid a couple layers of uh <laughs> excuse me. They, lay, they laid a couple layers of animation over it, and then I was able to actually control it. And uh, it changed what happened in this cutscene based on the thing that I was doing, which is super cool. Because um, then, it, you know, you actually have to pay attention to the cutscenes. And I kind of both love and hate that as an idea in games. Because, like, Resident Evil 4, as awesome as the quick time events were in that... It was like I don't want to have to pay. I don't want to have to pay attention. I want to sit back and watch and say, "Look at this crazy nonsense that's going on." <laughs> yeah, punching rocks and shit. So it exists in this game. It's not overused, so I'm not gonna bitch about it really. But yeah. it is there. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying. So here we go. We've got more mission results. Uh, I got another A. You're gonna see lots of A's and probably a lot of S's later on, especially once I get better. The shit you need. Yeah. Well, I was going to say once I get better suppressors, because I keep running out of suppressors for my hush poopus. Hush poopus. Snake, what was that thing? What Whatever it was, it looked unmanned. unmanned. So it's a giant unmanned aerial vehicle the hell is going on here? that used smaller aerial vehicles to abduct a child. Um, <laughs> it's being operated by Bill Cosby and Jared Fogel. Oh god. No, you just didn't child. do that. I totally you didn't did that. Do that. I totally did that. It's too soon. It's well, I mean You know he's getting charged. Jared. Jared's getting charged. Jared no, Jared's already in jail. Bill Cosby oh, yeah. just got charged. No, he's not getting charged. No, he just got charged. What? Like a week ago, somebody filed shit. About a week ago. Week ago. So Really? Yeah. So we huh. now we now are going to start receiving at our base here. We're going to start receiving personnel reports, uh, R and D reports. So now I've got the rank two hush poopy, and we've got Whoopie. a missile launcher. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! Shut up. Do you need some hot peppers? Do you need a hot pepper gaming? Oh, I'm gonna have some hot peppers here soon. <laughs> the chili pot, the chili powder I use for Madame, for my chili. stuff. Yeah, for my chili, because I'm making white chicken chili right now. For those of you who don't give a shit. Man, what was for the, those of you what's the upgrade care. on this one? Oh, the suppressor durability is up. <laughs> I wonder if the suppressors look different. No. No, they don't look different. They look different later on. You get different uh, models for weapons later on. Look at my pretty little M16. Okay. Enough dumb talking bullshit. Let's get back onto a mission. Let's get like back onto that dick. I want what? to show I want to show off cool stuff in the menus and cool different stuff you can do as they get unlocked. Uh -huh. But I want to spend for the purpose of the LP. I want to spend as little time in the actual menus and stuff as possible. Like I'll show off a couple things, but uh -huh. I want to get out of the menus and into the gameplay because this is already going to be a long LP. I think this one's going to be longer. I think this one's going to be longer than uh, the, the recollection. Well, than three. I think it's going to be longer than three. The recollection um, or the original? No, the the recollection version. Uh, it's going to be longer than our 20-part LP, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, I uh, could be remembering this completely wrong, because I feel like we're already coming along here at a steady clip. Uh, um, but, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't want this to last forever. Okay, so at this point, there's men. Men! There's a man's anus! There's men. Ew. I shot him. I got him. He's got a dick. What? What? What is with this dick stuff? Talk about <laughs> Metal Gear. Metal Gear has a... Uh, Shit! Metal. Oh, Fuck! My God! Hit him! God Ass. damn it! There we go. God, okay, Jesus. we got him. Better Let's go collect our men. Sh shotgun. <laughs> yeah, collect so in terms, of, in terms of the gameplay, um, a lot of it revolves around building up your base to get... 
uh, items that you can use within the yes. actual missions, which yes. is which is super cool. Um, Open. Here we go. However, Open. the actual base building and assigning people and all that stuff. Like I said, which I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and keep as helicopter. as little of that as possible in the actual LP. I'm gonna try to do the majority of that off screen. Quick question. Uh, yes. Do they scream when they get Fulton? Uh, no, because they're asleep. I know they do in the the Metal Gear Solid V. Um, the Phantom Are you Dogman. sure it's V, not pay, uh, 5? I promise you it's V. Okay. I promise you, I know. And look, my, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? My... Is there a sneaking suit in this one, too? Yes, there's sneaking suits in all of them. Uh, where you can change your clothes. Your snake cosplay mechanics. There is actual cosplay in the Phantom Pain. Oh. Yeah, I, you've you've seen it, but you don't realize it yet. I'll point it out when we get to that game in another, you know, thirty or forty parts. Um, but SOS. It is actually it's pretty goddamn neat. Oh. Yeah. You're not talking about the time where Snake wears uh, Quiet's outfit, are you? No, shut up. <laughs> that's a mod it's fantastic and it's not oh it's a mod canon. i thought it was a thing no that's that's a mod oh, damn snake does have a naked outfit that he wears but he's not wearing her thong and everything have you seen have you seen the model swap where they swap out ocelot for dd's model in no. some of the cutscenes? okay um after we finish this recording i yes. demand i demand practically the... order you oh <laughs> yeah to go onto YouTube and type in, and this is for everybody else listening as well. Um, go in there and type in um, uh, DD, the le the letters D and D, yeah, I got Ocelot that Model Swap. Um, you will not be disappointed. You will laugh your ass off. Um, let's just say that it ends with, uh, hey, look, there's a confidential document. I picked it up. Fuck it up. It's design specs for a, for a, a, a machine gun. Machine gun. Yes. There we go. So you notice I'm getting headshots like a motherfucker, and it's taking little to no effort, which is which is great. Uh, let's see. I've got. Well, I can use this now because um, I'm out of Fulton, so I won't be Fultoning any more men, which means I may switch to a lethal pro here soon. Damn. He didn't see me. Fuck that guy. He sucks at his job. <laughs> I got scared. You got scared. So a thing that we can't, a thing that we can't see, and I'm gonna lament about this because the sound design in this game is fantastic. But the thing we can't hear, or can't tell from this, because we can't actually hear it, Careful. because like you know of my recording visit. setup, which is absolute ass. Is the sound design in this game is unreal. The sound design in this game is absolutely fantastic. You don't say. It's unbelievable. Also, there's prisoners in this area I could have gotten if I hadn't, or if I had been smart and not used all my shit. Uh, fuck. You fuck. But I clearly wasn't that smart, so I'm fucked. Uh, not really, but there we go. That guy's out. See, there's we just I just saw the man over there. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I could pick up suppressors here, so I might be out of a suppressor soon, which means we may have to go loud regardless. Or actually sneak around instead of doing this, you know, informative murder stealth that's going on. Hey, look, another confidential document. Twin barrel shotgun. <laughs> Dude, there are some amazing weapons in this game. Are you serious? Yeah, bro? like, as the, games, as the games went on, it became less about complete and utter stealth and more about being able to play the game the way you want it. So, yeah. you do get, like, in Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain... Uh, which is V, um, you're, I mean, it, it behooves you, and it's very smart and important, and I don't know what I'm saying. Um, Tiger Stripe, yay, we're grabbing stuff. I like grabbing stuff. Grabbing stuff feels good. Um, but in the actual missions, uh, yeah. while you can do all the missions completely loud and still succeed, um, you are still highly incentivized to do it uh, quietly. Um, mm -hmm. when you do the side ops and we're, when you're just out in the open world, cause in the Phantom Pain, it's an open world game. You can explore and just do side ops and do whatever the fuck you want and always be in the open world. Um, 
Where was I going with this? But you, there, are, I mean, you can absolutely go loud and use airstrikes and call in helicopter support with rockets and all sorts of crazy shit. Look at these big bad motherfuckers wearing body armor and shit, by the way. And also yeah, look our at body this body armor everywhere. Look at this big ass goddamn thing. I wonder what's gonna happen here. Um, Poor guys. There's more men. But, uh, yeah, you can totally go loud and go crazy, and there's your first boss for the game, uh, which will be in the next episode, eh? Oh, come on, wow. To be continued in the next mission. Wow.